Hey everybody and welcome to this, my third of three videos on the Canon EOS 5D. In the first video we talked about what all of the stuff on the camera is. In the second video we went through all of the camera's functions and how to use them to take photos. In this video we're going to go through the menu system and talk about what every different item in the menu is and how to use them for your photography. So the menus, as we're going to talk about them, red is your image menu, blue is your playback menu, and yellow is your settings menu. And you can see the colors here on the side, and the frame around the setting will also be the color of that menu. So you can tell when you get to a different menu by the color on the side, the indicator on the side there, and then the frame changing colors as well. Okay, so we access the menu button by hitting menu, and first setting is quality, raw or raw plus different options or just different options. So large, medium, and small are JPEG sizes. Fine is sharp, slightly is sharper, and then the steps here are coarse, meaning less sharp. So basically a matter of personal preference and CF card size. This has a 16 gig CF card and raw only is 900 plus images. So uh, if you have Windows 10 or newer, the raw files will be displayed as previews in your folder. So you no longer need to shoot a JPEG to see what is on the raw file. So realistically, the most optimal way to get the best images out of this camera is to shoot raw only and then edit your raw files in post. If you don't have the ability or you're still learning how to take photos and don't want to don't know how to edit raw files, then pick one of the JPEGs. If we go to, to the large JPEG, which is 12.7 megapixels, and with um, the fine setting, which is more information, and hit OK, and then we'll exit out of menu. Now I've got at least a thousand JPEGs I can save on this camera. It doesn't display past 999. Best guess for you is that large JPEGs with a 16 gig CF card is going to be on the order of 4,000 photos. Small is going to be on the order of uh, 15 to 20,000 photos. So anyway, raw plus, uh, probably or raw rather, probably the best option for most users. Beep is on or off. Do you want to have the camera beep when you do things? This is just a matter of how much you want to make other people around you mad. Shoot without card on or off. With off, the camera will not shoot if there's no CF card in it. So matter of personal preference, and if you set it to off, that's a good way to remind yourself before you go if you have a memory card. Just try taking a quick photo. If it doesn't, if it doesn't take a photo, then you know you need to grab your CF card, and that will help. That's a, an insurance mechanism to make sure that you don't forget a CF card, which I've done uh, going to shoots. That's always very embarrassing, by the way. Auto exposure bracketing is your um, auto exposure bracketing sequence. We're going to use the rear wheel he here, and it will allow us to take three, only three, photos for auto ex in, in bracketing. The green dots underneath the meter display there show us that right now we're going to take one that's underexposed, one that's properly exposed, and one that is over. Now it's saying two stops under, proper and over. So that's how to adjust it and read it. And now we're back to this, this uh, just having a green dot under proper only, no bracketing. White balance shift and bracketing allows baseline white balance settings to be adjusted, and this is ideal for strong tung tungsten lights or extra green fluorescent lights. So if we press the set button and go in here, now we can adjust with the command wheel and command dial the settings on the, um, here we go, with the, the uh, white balance compensation. So what this is saying here is that it's going to take three photos. One that is, with, with this setting here, one that is the standard setting, one that's got more green, and one that's got more magenta. 
We can shift that down a little bit so that it's more magenta, less magenta, and standard. Or shift it up so that it's a lot more green, a little more green, and standard. Here we go. We'll rotate it out now. We can do blue and amber, or blue green and amber green, purple and amber magenta. So basically, this allows you to do bracketed sequences of your white balance settings if you don't know exactly what your white balance setting is going to be, or if your lighting is variable or things like that. This is also really good for studio shooting and so forth. Custom white balance, what this does is this will pull up an image on your CF card, and then you can hit set to save the white balance data from that image as your default white balance setting. So that's really useful if you have a white card. You put the white card down here and you take a photo of it where that white card fills your frame. Then you come in here to custom white balance and you save it and now that will be your default white. Or if you're using a, a tabletop studio with a white backdrop, you take a photo of that and save it. And that again will be your, your default white. That will allow you then to, instead of going in and manually adjusting white balance settings to get it exactly right, to save it so that you have uh, the, the computers figuring that out for you. Color temperature setting. This allows you to manu manually set your Kelvin temperature. So where we saw in video two, your Kelvin setting, this is where you would dial that in to have your, your Kelvin white balance temperature set. Color space, sRGB or Adobe RGB. sRGB is the default. Unless you are really into the Adobe ecosystem, Leave it at sRGB. sRGB is recognizable by many more programs, and windows, and things like that. Picture style, faithful, monochrome, user settings, different ones like this. Honestly, uh, your best bet is going to be just to leave it at neither neutral or faithful, which are zeros across the board. These, this, this camera is a bit long in the tooth. It's, as of this video's recording, 12 to 15 years old. Anything you can adjust in this camera, you can do better in any photo editing software that you can, can buy or download for free today. So if you leave this in one of the, the faithful or neutral settings, then your images will come out with more accurate colors for the scene, and then you can do better adjustments in post. Adjustments you make in here are not easy to undo in post. So if you don't have them, you have more editing flexibility in post. Next, we'll go into the playback menu. Protect allows you to protect individual photos. So you bring one up. If you hit set, it will not be deletable from the CF card until you unprotect it. Rotate rotates images. There we go. Hit the set button to rotate them. Print order allows you to change the order of your printing. Now, this only applies if the camera is connected via the mini USB port to your computer or printer. Realistically, you're going to get faster prints and better results just transferring files from your CF card to your computer and working with them there. This is not an option that's going to be useful for most people. Autoplay is going to give us a slideshow of everything on the CF card right now. Review time, off, two, four, eight, or hold. Off means there's no instant review. Two, four, and eight seconds are how long each picture displays on the LCD screen after it's taken in instant review. And hold means it will display until you tell it not to. Turning that to off will give you a lot more battery life. AF points, display or not display. When you play back an, a photo, this will show or not show the active autofocus points in your photo information screen. Histogram, if you have the histogram displayed or you go into your photos information screen, is it going to display the brightness 
and darkness histogram or the red, green, blue histogram. Personal preference and what information you find useful. Auto power off, one through 30 minutes and off. Basically, this is just how many minutes your camera will stay on without being used before it turns itself off. Matter of personal preference and battery preservation for this setting. Auto rotate is on or off. This is whether or not your screen will automatically rotate portrait or landscape with the camera's orientation. LCD brightness is how bright you want your LCD to be. And you can adjust this downward to save battery, or if you're in a dark environment, you can set that downward to um, be less bright on your eyes. If you're outside in full sun, it might be more useful to have it be very bright. Date and time. Here you can set the date and the time, and also the format. File numbering, continuous auto reset or manual reset. So continuous means that when you change CF cards, the file numbering will continue. So it'll, if you were at file number 949, and you put a new CF card in, or you take this one out, move all the files to your computer and put it back in, next image is 950. Auto reset means if you put a new CF card in or dump the files and put this one back in, Instead of being 950, it goes back to 1. Manual reset will set it back to 1 automatically and then revert to whichever of these two settings you had it set at. I prefer continuous because with auto reset, it's easier to accidentally overwrite files. So if you just leave it on continuous, you're less likely to overwrite files. Selecting a folder allows you to change what folder you are using in your uh, camera. Your language selection, you have all of these different languages to choose from. Video system is NTSC and PAL. This is not for video recording because this camera cannot record video. This is for the video output that's underneath that little cover. Communication, print, or PTP. This has to do with how your computer commu your, and your camera communicate when you plug it in through the mini USB port. With this camera's age, I'm not even sure that it can still talk with modern cam computers and whether or not that is um, something that you can even use today. Format, formats your memory card. And you can see the little illumination over here indicating that the memory card is in use. Custom functions we'll come back to in a moment. Clear settings will allow you to either clear all of your camera settings, clear only your custom functions, or clear only your registered camera set. Registered camera set is this up here at the C button. So if we select that, we have now erased everything that we had recorded with the C. Registering camera settings we saw in video two. Sensor cleaning allows you to lock up the sensor so that you can clean it. And what you do is you come in here, you hit OK. Wait for the mirror to pop up. Apparently also wait for the mirror to fall off. I've never had that happen before. Uh, just a second. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that's going to be fun. Okay, let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, sensor cleaning. <laughs> All right, we're going to go in here to OK. It's going to open up the sensor so that we can now grab a DSLR brush like this, 
pull it out of the tube, and you want to hold this so that the sensor is facing to the ground, but you just brush any dust off the sensor like that. And as soon as you're done, you hit power, and then the shutter closes and the mirror pops back into place. All right, so firmware version displays the firmware version. And 1.1.1 appears to be the final version, but I could not find it available for download anywhere. If Canon still has it available for download somewhere, I wasn't able to determine where that somewhere is. I was able to find firmware version 1.1.0, which was the second to final version. There's a picture line link in the description that allows you to download that for installation if you need a more current firmware than what you have. All right, let's go up to the custom functions. Custom functions, there are 21 of these. And if you have the manual or have the PDF, these start on page 149 if you want to follow along because there are some of these that are a little bit complicated. Use the rear command wheel to scroll between them and then hit the set button to select that function and then use the rear command wheel to pick which one you want. So. Custom function one is the set button function, which is this button right here in the middle of the command wheel. And that applies to when the, how the set button will work during normal shooting. So this is all personal preference for this one. The options are default, which is no function. Change your image quality. Change your picture style. Display your menu, that's a duplicate of this function here. Image replay, which is a duplicate of this function here. Or again, back to no, no function. So it's a, it's a matter of personal preference what you want it to do. If you do need to change the image quality between RAW and JPEG or RAW Plus, you can do that with the set button. Or if you want to change your picture style between natural, faithful, portrait, whatever it is, you can assign that to the set function. Option two is long exposure noise reduction. This is a choice between off, auto, and on. So off means there's no long exposure noise reduction. Auto means that if the camera detects noise during long exposures, it will automatically reduce it. And on means it will always reduce noise during long exposures. There are better programs downloadable for free for noise reduction than are built into this compu uh, camera's computer. So if you're going to be shooting long exposures and you want noise reduction, do it on your computer and leave this set to off. Custom function three is your flash sync speed in aperture value, or aperture priority, the AV here, mode only. This only applies to the flash sync speed in AV mode. Zero is automatic, meaning that your camera will pick any sync speed one two hundredth of a second and slower. One locks your flash sync speed at one two hundredth of a second in aperture priority mode. And zero, oh, we're back to zero, auto. Those are the two choices. So it's personal preference, but if you use auto, then the camera can use longer exposures like one sixtieth or six seconds. So this is, it's beneficial at night, especially to set this on auto so that your background can be illuminated as well as your foreground. It's beneficial during the day to leave this at 1 200th of a second because that will give you better fill flash use. Option four is your shutter auto exposure lock auto focus lock button. With option zero, your auto focus and auto exposure lock are both activated when you press the shutter halfway. So what that means is that when you press the shutter ha button halfway down, when focus is obtained, the automatic exposure setting, whether if you're an AVTV program or green box mode, will be set and locked until you release the shutter button or the picture is taken, regardless of how lighting changes. Option one is auto exposure lock and auto focus. 
So what this does is you use the asterisk button to focus and then the shutter button to, oh, oops, to lock the exposure in option one. So this is your autofocus button here and autofocus will only occur when you push the asterisk and then your shutter button locks exposure in. Option two is in AI servo mode, when you press the you press the asterisk to pause autofocus, which is useful if an object is coming between you and the subject. Like say you're taking a picture of someone out on a soccer field, and they're the way they're running, there's going to be a light post that comes between you and them. You can push the asterisk button to pause autofocus so that it won't focus on that light post. And then exposure locks when the photo is taken and not before. And then option three is useful for subjects that start and stop like basketball players or birds. And exposure is set when the photo is taken and the asterisk pauses the AF in AI servo mode. So the differences between two and three are that three is better for moving subjects, especially ones that move around randomly. Two is better for either stationary subjects or subjects that are moving in a predictable manner. Option five is your AF assist beam on or off. Basically, yes, your autofocus will emit from the front of the camera or no, it won't. And you can adjust this as needed based on whether you're uh, at a sporting event where yes, you can get away with using it. Might be useless, so then you want to set it to, it won't emit because the AF beam won't help. Or if you're at your kid's play or a museum or um, an outdoor play or something like that, you might want to turn that off so you don't distract the performers. Custom function six is exposure increments. Option zero is one third stops. Option one is half stops. Largely a matter of personal preference. I prefer one third stops, especially on older cameras where even shooting in raw, having that additional sensitivity increment can help set you up to have the best raw files to edit. Function seven is your flash firing. Option zero is all flashes fire. Option one turns off the hot shoe and non-canon flash is connected to the PC port. So basically option zero means that if you have a, a flash up here in the hot shoe and any flash, canon or not canon, connected to the PC port, both of them will fire when you take a picture. Option one means that you, if you have any flash plugged into the hot shoe, it will not fire. And if you have a non-canon flash in the PC port, it will not fire. Option one, rather, is only good if you have a Canon brand flash plugged into the PC port. Matter of personal preference and what types of flashes you use. Option eight is ISO expansion off or on. With on, it expands your ISO to low, which is 50 ISO, and high, which is 3200. Honestly, this camera suffers image quality at both of those settings, so it's best just to leave that at off. Option nine is your bracket sequence. You're, you have four choices, zero, one, two, and three. Zero is proper exposure under and over. One is the exact same as zero, but the automatic canceling only works if the flash is ready. Two is under, proper, over. And then three is the same as the previous, but with the same caveat as option one, whereas auto canceling only works if the flash is ready. So with matter of personal preference, how you like to see your images displayed and your playback on your computer, whether you go with zero or two, and then um, the, flash, the, the flash settings in one or three would be very specific to those of you who use flashes. I recommend for, for option nine, leaving it in, in option two. For custom function nine, option two is gonna be the matter of personal preference, but I tend to like to see under normal over in my playback on my computer. Custom function 10, superimposed display on or off. 
On means that your AF points flash red when they are uh, activated. Off means your AF points do not flash. So it's, that's a matter of personal display and how you want your display in your viewfinder to communicate with you. Custom function 11, we're on to the bottom row, nice. Is the menu button display position. Okay, zero is your previous location and it reverts to the top when the power is turned off. So if you hit menu and you were in the settings somewhere and you turned off the camera, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it would go to the top. With one, previous location always, even after power off. So if you were in one of the settings, you hit menu, you turn off your, ca your camera, you turn it back on, then you hit menu again, you would go back to that same settings location. And option two is you always go to the top of the menu, regardless of whether you've just hit the menu button or turned off your camera or not. So matter of personal preference, how you want the menu to open. Custom function 12 is mirror lockup, enable or disable. So with this, this is how you use mirror lockup when you need to shoot with the mirror locked up for things like macros, astrophotography, etc., where eliminating all of your mirror shake is vital. If you have it set to enable, you push the shutter button once to lock up the mirror, you push it a second time to take the exposure. And that's very annoying if you're just trying to go about shooting on a normal basis. So unless you need mirror lockup, set this to disable. Custom function 13 is AF point selection method, which are normal, um, multi, and quick, con uh, quick control. So normal is you press the AF selection button over here, and then you use the eight-way pad here, or the rotating, as rotating dial as we saw, to select your AF points. With one, it's the exact same, except you don't have to press the AF button first. You just hit the AF, this pad, and it will adjust your AF points. And with two, the rear dial changes the AF points always, and holding down the AF selection button using, uh, and using the top dial adjusts EV. To me, two seems to add a needless amount of complexity to the camera's operation. So I don't understand a situation in which that would be useful. One, I could definitely see this being useful if you're very good at using the eight-way pad here to move between AF points and you want to have very specific things in focus. Like if you're taking pictures of a team sport and you want to switch between the, the players who are at different AF points very quickly. Normal is going to be the one that you want to use for the majority of people because most people are not going to be a strong enough power user to switch between AF points uh, as a matter of course during the shooting. Uh, during shooting. 14 is your ETTL2 setting. So basically this is your through the lens metering setting with a flash. And your choices are evaluative or averaging. So with a flash, is the camera going to use evaluative metering to determine your exposure setting or average metering? So with evaluative, it will, the camera will compensate your exposure setting with a flash for subject depth, background distance, bright points, dark points, things like that. With averaging, it will just take the whole scene and try to give you the best flash setting to illuminate all of it which means if you have very bright points and very dark points, they'll be all blown out and in very deep shadows, respectively. Um, average works a little bit better if you have a flatter scene, and evaluative is better if you have a complex scene. 15, shutter curtain sync. These are first curtain and second curtain are your two options. Okay, so this is largely a creative intent with your image here. At 1 200th of a second, there's no noticeable difference in this setting, but there is at longer exposure speeds. So when you use your flash, the flash generally syncs in first curtain mode. The, the first curtain shutter curtain opens. When it reaches the end of its travel, that's when the flash syncs, and then the second curtain travels, right? And in your flash sync speed, 
the entire sensor is open to light for one two hundredth of a second before the second curtain closes. If you're doing a 20 second exposure, then the first curtain opens, flash fires, 20 seconds go by, second curtain closes. Second curtain sync. All right, at one two hundredth of a second, first curtain opens, one two hundredth of a second passes, flash fires, and then the second curtain triggers. That's why at, this, at the one two hundredth of a second, this is not a noticeable difference. At 20 seconds, the first curtain opens, 20 seconds go by, second flash fires, second curtain closes. So how is this useful? Okay, let's say that you have your buddy, you're, you're up here as the photographer, and your buddy's going to ride a bike or a skateboard or a scooter or whatever through your frame. And you've got lights on the wheels so that they're going to be tracking a, a spiral motion as he goes through the frame. If you set this to bulb at second curtain sync, you tell him to go, you open up the shutter, here he comes into the frame, the lights of course are making the, that nice spiral, and then you let go of the shutter speed, the, the shutter button. At the moment you let go of the shutter button, the flash will fire and then the, the cut curtain will close and end the image. And you'll have your buddy here illuminated with the lines of lights from the tires of the bike that he was riding. If you have it at first curtain sync, you tell him to ride in, flash fires here, your buddy is illuminated, and then he rides into, through, through the frame with the lights lighting it up, and then you let go of the shutter button and the, flash, or the shutter closes, no flash fires. That's in this setting right here. Then you have your buddy illuminated with lights coming forward. So that's one really basic example of how first or second curtain can affect the results of your image. Realistically, this only matters for longer exposures. If you're taking a picture of a person at night in front of a city, and you want to have that city illuminated, and you're going to do a two second exposure, you have the flash fire, you're, you're, the person you're taking a picture of is illuminated, and then they just sit there for the rest of the exposure while the rest of the city is, uh, the, the dimmer lights from that are recorded on the camera's sensor. If you set that to second curtain, uh, you would probably surprise the person you're taking a picture of and you would be less likely to have a pleasing portrait. So those are some, that's the functionality of it and some considerations about using first or second curtain flash sync. Custom function 16 is safety shift in aperture value or time value uh, shooting, disable or enable. With disable, let's, when we talked in video two about aperture value and, and shutter priority, where the, um, where the, the setting was flashing to let you know either you didn't have enough aperture or you didn't have enough shutter speed to take a proper image. In disable, the camera would take the photo anyway and it would just be dark. In enable, the camera would override your settings and give you a proper exposure. Disable is better for learning how to use those settings because it will let you make a mistake. Enable is better if you want to make sure that you get some sort of image uh, because it's more important to get the image than to learn your mistakes. Custom function 17 is AF point activation area. Zero is standard and one is expanded. So there we go, expanded. With expanded, in AI servo mode, when only the central autofocus point is selected, the six adjoining AF points will provide assistance to help the central AF point be more effective. So this only applies in a very limited situation. AI servo mode, center autofocus point only. So one is generally a better setting to leave this on as it makes AF at the very center of the frame when you have only that single AF point activated, slightly more accurate, and it makes it focus slightly more quickly. And that's especially true with moving objects. 18 is LCD display return to shoot. So zero with the shutter button only 
and one is any button will return the camera to shooting mode during image playback. Okay, so this has to do with playback only. Also with, oh yeah, okay. So it says also with asterisk, etc. Honestly, that would have been better if it just said also with any button. So what this means is that when you're playing back images, any button that isn't used to control the playback of the images will close the playback mode and take you back to shooting. Uh, that's, that's number one here. With zero, when you're playing back images, only pressing the shutter button will close the playback and take you back to shooting mode. Matter of personal preference, I tend to like zero because it is easier to prevent mistakes with this than it is to, to prevent accidentally leaving playback mode than it is with option one. Custom function 19 is lens autofocus stop button function. So this only applies if you have a lens with an autofocus stop button. There are five options in this. So zero is if you have a lens with an autofocus stop button and you push it, autofocus stops. Option one, actually there's six, six options here. Option one, auto, the autofocus button starts and operates only with option one, autofocus action starts and operates only while the lens's AF button on the lens is pressed. And that's not the switch that all EF lenses have, it's a specific button that some EF lenses have. Option two, that button will lock the auto exposure when metering. Option three, that button switches the AF point from the manually selected one, if you manually select one here, to automatic AF. So option three is actually a really powerful tool. Let's say that you have a lens with an autofocus stop button and you select option three. You can manually select a single AF point and then push that autofocus button down and have all of the AF points become active. So you can switch between a single AF point and everything like that. So that's a really useful feature if you have lenses with that functionality. Option four switches from one shot to AI servo function. So basically if you push the, um, if you're in one shot and you hold down the AF on button, it switches to AI servo. If you're in AI servo and you hold down the AF button, it will switch to one shot. Option five is it starts image stabilization. So that also, so this applies to lenses with the AF button and image stabilization built into the lens. I don't have a single one, a single lens with that functionality, so it doesn't matter what I set this on. But if you do, then it's just a matter of your shooting style and personal preference and how you use your lenses. Custom function 20 is add original decision data off or on. Okay, with on, this adds data to your image's EXIF that allows verification that that file is an original image. So that's really useful for photojournalists or people who are doing forensic data imagery, things like that, because it allows you to go into the data in your image, the EXIF data, and verify whether it has been tampered with or not. So you can prove that your image is original and unedited matter of personal preference and how you use your camera, whether or not you need that. And then option zero is your focusing screen. So you come in here to adjust the focusing screen that you have. Your options are zero, one, and two. So zero is your EEA focusing screen. This is the default that your camera comes with. So if you have the standard focusing screen, set this to zero. With one, this is the EED, which is the grid focusing screen. And with EES, this is the super precision mat. If this is not set correctly, your camera will not function or meter correctly. I don't know exactly what the ramifications are, but you do need to have this set for the correct focusing screen. Guess what? That's everything. We have gone through every single thing on this camera. The Canon EOS 5D one of the venerable 
full frame cameras. Definitely a very, very good choice for learning photography. A very solidly made camera. And also, given the small file size, very affordable to operate today. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.